safe to say that SBT has lost their legend status, haven't they? At this point, it's been last season, they really struggled. This is their redemption run, basically, as they were first, 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 second, fourth, third. And now they are, go are going to be coming back for what will be yeah. a first place again. It is so hard to say that, you know, legends in the Chinese scene like Misaka and Melody C are not looking at their peak at the moment. They're not looking like they are at the top of their game. Maybe it's the current meta that doesn't fit them. Maybe there's some... Uh, some really deep anti-synergy in their team and uh look at those kdas they're actually favoring the one it really shows in what kind of a slump sbt has been finding themselves for a long time now exactly it can prove to be a little bit of trouble you can see some of the other stats though very much leaning in sbt's favor unsurprisingly and we do have battlefield unbanned by both teams we have sbt banning out sky dragonshire banned by the one very sensibly Battlefield's available, it's an SBT standard, but we're starting off with the Infernal Shrines. Yeah, and that ban against SBT on Dragonshire makes a lot of sense. It's still their most successful battleground by far. Uh, I remember last year when we cast them, and at the beginning of 2018, they were undefeated. Um, and only recently did they take a little bit of a blow there in their flawless record. Um, but won't be playing on that battleground anyways. So it's going to be Infernal Shrines after all. And uh, the Tracer being banned out immediately against the one. Looks like they uh, do not want to face the Overwatch hero. And uh, Maya banned against SBT. Now, it, what would you say, Tetra? Like, we've found out it's a certain tendency for most teams, you know, what their comfort picks are, especially CE. We have a lot of, um, you know, details and a lot of infos. What would you say is, like, the greatest strength of SBT right now, if there are any? I mean, I think their strengths are the same as they've always been. They just need to actually get the execution back into their compositions. They're very proficient in the harder-to-play heroes, like the Genji, like the Medivh. Mm -hmm. All these kind of heroes that you can just really make playmaking plays with. Also, I like stealing the Genji away from Meng. Always pleases me. Uh, but yeah, I just think they, they've they just been playing a little shaky. So I think that can be fixed with just a little bit of practice. Yeah. A little bit of practice, a little bit of uh, synergy. Of building up here but I, I also like the point you brought up there you know you steal away as a first pick the genji from meng it's without a doubt his uh, scariest looking hero and uh, they have a really good genji themselves your melody c let's not forget about his prowess on the hero if he's actually going to end up playing him which i think he will that of course leaves as well you know traditional ranged assassins like hanzo um like the gray main open to lucky that's a little bit more right up his alley and already the Blaze and Mufrin steal stolen away by the one. This is kind of not their playstyle, really. Like the defensive style, you know, a lot of protection with the bunker. We have yet to see the one adapt to this, and I'm quite excited about it. Adapt adapting is always welcome. Like we've already said, the entirety of HC China is adapting to the Blaze, finally. Took a while. Um, but they are here now. It used to just be SPT, who would basically only play it. And also lost of it a fair amount. So yeah. it is interesting to see the, the Blaze just coming in from everyone else now. Now, yesterday, SBT went very heavy on Diablo to mm. their detriment almost. So the question is, are they going to stick with that or are they going to readjust and perhaps put Misaka back on someone like the Muradin? Yeah. A question for you, Tetcher. You've been casting the European Open Division yesterday. Yeah. Was there any Uther at all? Yes. Um... Not that much, but there was some Uther, so Yorick and Diablo coming in here. But yeah, there was there was a, there was a very low amount of Uther. We were also on the live mm -hmm. patch mm -hmm. uh, on Europe, so we actually saw a little bit of Rhaegar as well. Okay, um, it looked pretty reasonable. And I think there was an Urel as well. There was a single Urel. It lost, but it was it won its lane. It just lost the game. Yeah, I remember she uh, or I rem remember her bullying the Blaze like there was no tomorrow. Yeah. Absolutely owning you that trash lane. Trash a Blaze in lane, you know you're cla you're having a pretty good time. <laughs> so yeah, Urel, good hero. Uh, but yeah, with Neoric and Diablo on the board, that opens up possibilities for a Phoenix. So I would very much not be surprised to see the one banning that out. It also sets up. A fair amount of decent solo laning. Like, I, it's weird to see the Yorick prioritized so high, especially by SPT. It seems like a yeah. thing that one would do. And it's it's a little weird, too. But I think what really made them regret the Diablo pick yesterday was actually a Leoric. The thing is, 
they didn't even have to be afraid of the Lyurg anymore because already a Blaze was picked for the one, right? So these two heroes kind of overlap and they fulfill the same role, namely that of a Bruiser, of an Offlaner. I don't think the one would have picked a Lyurg anyway. So them just securing the Lyurg early means they're going to hide something for the second pick phase, which is going to commence now after Alex Strasa and Tigers are banned. Now with the second pick phase already into play, what do the one wants? With Hanzo available is a possibility. They already have Blaze. They could just go Hanzo, Blaze, Johanna. It's a classic. Uh, they're going to get drained by the Yorick, but it's a little bit of something. If not, we actually saw a little bit of success from ETC in uh, Open Division yesterday. That was mm. nice to see his return. And I would not mind that here. Bringing out the ETC is a very reactionary play to a Genji, but he can struggle against the Yorick is the issue. Couldn't agree more. I think it's quite flubbergasting to see um, this lack of uh, ETC, you know? Um, flubbergasting? Yeah, don't you know that word? I thought it was British. Yes, it's flabbergasting. Flubber is a movie, is a uh, Robin Williams movie. Fl a flabber good one. is a ghastly. So it's flabbergasting. Uh, <laughs> flabbergasting. Flabbergasting. Yes, there we go. Uh, so yes, there you go. Um, so here we go. Hanzo and <laughs> we see Garrosh not going for the Johanna here. Oh my god, I'm going to have to rewatch Flubber now. <laughs> it was such Same. a good movie back in the days. <laughs> just just rewatch all everything Robert Williams ever oh, did. Uh, Mrs. Doubtfire. All yeah, the classics. Just all of them. Jumanji. Just all of them. Uh, <laughs> which was way better than the new uh, remake they had. I have not seen the new one, but don't, I could watch the don't. balance. Don't do it for three hours, and I would probably be pretty satisfied. As we see the Garrosh in the on the board with no percentage damage, other than the Yorick. So the Yorick's pretty reasonable, but do SPT want more? No, this should go with a little bit of burst mm. damage to try and help deal with Hanzo and follow up on the Diablo. Okay, so they go for the Jaina over the Phoenix, which is something we have normally seen with uh, Diablo. Looks like Lucky. Probably feels a little more comfortable on the Jaina, and they want to go for even more burst damage. Plus CC, of course, that uh, Jaina brings to the table. The consistent slows against the Garrosh allows her to maybe kite him a little more efficiently than a Blaze, uh, sorry, than a Phoenix could. So uh, don't hate it, but it could bite them in the long run. Once again, I think there is very little tank shredding available for SBT. And if there's one thing that we can say about um, teams with little tank shredding against Blaze and Garage is that normally they can stop those warriors from, you know, engaging battles and uh, putting yeah. the pressure onto like, you. The percentage damage is Leoric. Diablo used to, not anymore. Yeah. So the question is, what can Leoric really do? Crushing Hope might be the thing. Maybe upgraded March of the Black King, the Death March, might be uh, something we might see at level 20, yeah. but I very much doubt it. For now, though, the one taking the Phoenix off their own blaze is basically their only slows, but it's still a pretty decent setup. And that's the question, right? Which heroic ability are we going to see from the Leoric? I could totally imagine a uh, Entomb into a Lightning Breath and maybe a Ring of Frost uh, to really blow someone down to pieces in a couple of milliseconds. Uh, alternatively, though, as you brought up, the March of the Black King would basically ensure that uh, Leoric has enough tankiness, enough uh, resilience to, uh, you know, sustain himself in those team fights. Yeah. And the Death March, quite frankly, at level 20 is, in my personal opinion, an insanely strong talent that is oftentimes overlooked. So I'm actually leaning towards March of the Black King. For starters, you're going to be fighting on the objective, so you're going to get a fair amount of sustain. For second, it is an unstoppable. So yeah. having a second unstoppable when you're against a Garrosh is a really big deal. So being able to move onto those fights and basically try to force Garrosh to blow an ability before Diablo even gets caught out can be really helpful, especially if you live. Yeah, absolutely true. Now, the Jaina, though. I, I, I continue to have my issues with that Jaina as a last pick. I really, I'm really afraid um, of SBT lacking a little bit of damage against that front line. But we're going to see how it pans out, whether the one can do it again and steal the show of SBT, or whether SBT can finally stabilize and show us that they still have what it takes to play a significant role in the league. On the left-hand side in the blues, we have the one with Hugo on that place. This time, Muggle is playing the Hanzo. Meng is playing Phoenix. Hee Hee on their garage. And ZJZ on Malfurion. What has Meng done to his mount? Um, either way, on the right hand side, we see <laughs> SPT with a lucky playing Jaina, Melisi on Genji, Misaka on Diablo, Soap on the Yorick, and ZZH is playing on the Deckard K. So, yeah, look at, look at Phoenix's mount. 
Let's see. Look what he's managed to do. He's managed to wedge himself oh, into his mount. Oh, that looks amazing. <laughs> I don't know how he's done this, but he has found a way. It's a floating snowflake now. A truly special one. <laughs> it's just a special snowflake phoenix. Oh, dear. So, we have level one Diablo almost getting caught up in immediate shadow charge, while Melly C wraps around to Meng to put some pressure on, and we see he getting on it. Percentage oh. damage, not enough. So, just short of the kill. Yeah, beautifully done there, uh, saving he he. Malfurion and him are just best buddies here for now. Melody C entering that little party bush to slow down the rotations of their opponents. And uh, just to prove uh, a little bit of a nuisance here. Strong damage actually on that garage oh once again. Misaka has not had enough just yet. Jaina oh also in the mix, but they can't just get him down. Oh my, ZJZ with the heels keeping Garrosh alive. Wow. This is gonna, we're gonna have some very resilient team fights. Nicely done, the one. Yeah, and by keeping the enemies busy and, you know, baiting them into focus even more on the garage, uh, the double lane in the top lane was actually able to inflict some heavy, heavy damage onto the towers of SPT. So up to this point, the one's battle plan seems to really work out just fine. So, uh, by the way, has Muggle on the side of the one ever played a mage? Can he even um... play mages? I wonder. Well, we, we have very little sample size, but yeah. I am so far not sure. We will have to wait and see uh, as time goes on, but I, so far I don't think he's played one. I think it was just Hanzo twice. I think so too. So we keep a close eye on to the hero pool of uh, Muggle and whether he's indeed unable to pick any mages by default. Possibly. We'll have to see, although I do like the idea of a Ming mage. Curious which <laughs> yes. one it will be. Uh, for now, though. Misaka finds Meng. Meng leaves casually. But overall, it's still a nice little gank, uh, putting the pressure onto Meng, making him a little bit scared. Always nice to be able to do. As level 4 is hit by SBT. Level 4 is here, and we see... Oh, we see the Aussie Renewal, by the way, on Leoric. That's a quite unusual yeah. choice these days. Normally you see a uh, full uh, Q build, but it gives, of course, Soap this extra amount of uh, self-sustain, right? You can activate it manually, it'll give you some nice healing. Um, and the more minions um, and takedowns in general you're actually part of, the lower, uh, sorry, excuse me, uh, regeneration globes. The more regeneration globes you pick up, the lower the cooldown of this Aussie renewal is going to be. Which is pretty great, as the Oracle has pretty solid wave clip, meaning a good chance to try and steal some globes from your opponent. Not getting the globe from this camp, though. He could have actually rotated if he'd been a little bit quicker. Um, but instead, just assisting his team in what appears to be a four-man move into the mid lane. Mm -hmm. They find Hugo looking for the objective with everyone already here. Both teams level five. As SPT take the more aggressive posturing position, but the one, they're also getting some push value using the C uh, using these Kazra camp. Absolutely. Here goes Melody C trying to put the pressure onto Meng, but guess what? Meng, as a fellow Genji main, knows exactly on how to repay the favor onto the Genji and how to play against that hero. So he remained his calm. He didn't even move back an inch. He just kept firing onto Genji and actually won the outcome of that brawl up to this point. And with that being said, the one, they maintain a really nice lead over the Skeletons. They're going to get this first Punisher of the game. But SBT, they didn't overcommit. They didn't lose anyone. They play this very patiently themselves. And they're probably going to be able to defend this very handsomely. This does appear to be the case. SBT moving back into lane. Soaking XP. Leoric even slowing down the rotation of Blaze to try and make him miss some XP so the mercenaries can get some more value. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. And in the meantime, bot lane is being defended at a fairly passive rate. Punisher was just pulled over. Lucky's pinging it with abilities. One tower will guaranteed go down. The second one may suffer. Oh. He, he goes over the wall, but the wall goes down. So as such, he's able to back out. Yeah. He, he is just, man... I don't know well, how he does it or um, how he maintains that composure, but he always seems to be this relaxed warrior, you know? He doesn't really panic. He doesn't really uh, overcommit and overreact. He's just always that resilient and reliable warrior that holds the front line, even if he's in a little bit of a pinch. So, uh, actually, we've seen a lot of Hee Hee Arthas in uh, last phase. I wonder if we're going to see some, some crazy innovative picks from him this time, because I think awesome. whereas other heroes or players like Misaka, for example, are rather one-dimensional in China right now. Like, Wind plays a lot of Garage whenever he gets the chance to. Misaka seems to be a really big fan of Diablo. He, he I think, is one of the more diverse warrior players. You know, he plays a great Johanna, he plays the ETC, yeah. the Anubarak. He's got a lot of heroes in his arsenal. 
I, I would agree. Oh, Melody C5C he there. Um, but I would agree. I would not mind saying it was an experiment. Obviously, Arthur's is not really fitting in the meta at the moment because there's no one really melee auto attack heavy in the meta. So Arthur's doesn't get as much value. Right. But I would be curious to see what else he brings out. Maybe repopularizing the Anubrak a little bit more mm -hmm. or bringing out something else. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. Anubrak ain't hurt nobody and uh, unless you're in the enemy team. And I think Anubrak is one of those heroes that, you know, is always good. And has always been good. It just depends on who plays him. Um, we've seen a lot of Korean teams actually at the midseason brawl rely on a new uh, We've seen a lot of aggressive plays made by them in great to great success. And maybe a little bit of experimenting, especially against heroes like Jaina. I think a new can do so much, not only because of his uh, uh, magic armor that he has when he uses his W, but also because of the Beatles potentially intercepting some of those skill shots, some of those frost bowls. Um, it's really time for China, I, China, I think, to. Uh, deviate a little bit and get a little bit more diverse in terms of uh, drafts because I think one of the problems that China has as a region right now when it comes to the international competition is that they often have their own meta that is too stable and doesn't change in league too much so they can't adapt to what other teams like Korean teams European teams bring to the table and they fall really short in those tournaments like they did in the recent past you might be right so we'll have to see if they are able to oh. steal, not, or almost steal, good attempt. Uh, we'll have to see if they are able to begin to adapt, or even if the meta is even worth evolving. Perhaps we are watching right now the best meta there possibly is, and we just do not know it yet. Either way, we are seeing level 10 hit by SPT. They're still able to out-soak at least a little bit, despite losing that first Punisher. Everyone has their heroics, except for Leoric, who is holding his. It is a Lightning Ref, Water Elemental X Strike. Stay a while and listen. Mm -hmm. And then we are waiting to see what Leoric will pick. Yeah, look at that. Leoric being a little cheeky there, being a little slow. But here goes the Entomb, and it's being used immediately with Diablo. But the Bunker has respawned, keeping plays warm and safe for now. Double stun. Here comes the Salvo. Lots of damage. Lucky finished off. Misaka also low. Able to tackle his way out via minion soap. Dropped, though, getting, a, getting ZJZ chucked at him for the kill. ZJZ also will triple. get taken out, sorry. ZJ, ZZH, sorry, will get taken out. Yeah, and there's the triple that the one was looking for. And SPT, the super perfect team, once again, with cracks in their defenses. Uh, they lost three members there, and it was a very sloppy start of that team fight, I want to say. It looked good at the beginning. There we go. Entomb, boom. Diablo gets the bonus damage against the wall of the Entomb. But hey, they didn't really think about the bunker. Hugo buying so much time. And look at those slows dealing so much damage. And the salvo there on top of it as well. Meng cleaning house. But the biggest problem here, I think, for SPT Tetra was the fact that ZZH was not there yet as the support. He couldn't drop a couple of potions yeah. to really design the battleground around his liking. Yeah, that was uh, that was concerning. Jaeger, Jaeger, sorry, ZZH really needs to place down some more potions, yeah. more potions pre the fight in order to be able to survive those purification salvos. Speaking of potions, Diablo needs some right now. He is not going to be able to get them. The sleep though for the attempted counter is not landing. Bunker too good. Bunker too good, yo. Oh, they've been dropping and dodging uh, enemy heroes so well with it. You can see how versatile the bunker is, right? You can escape um, if you're getting caught isolatedly like that Blaze just did. You can use it to dodge certain abilities like the stay on listen. Meng also just casually escaping the shadow charge. It seems like no matter what Misaka on that Diablo is trying to do today, it's just not going to work out so nicely. But despite... Losing a couple of team fights in a row now, SPT that is. They're still doing pretty well in the soaking and the experience. They're not too far behind. Yeah, they're doing all right. They were, in fact, ahead of experience a little bit a couple seconds ago. But we are going to have a quick pause before we continue. Like I said, though, XP pretty even mid fort It survives, so mm -hmm. this could absolutely be a worse situation for SPT. Yeah, they could definitely be at a much worse position, you know, being down several levels, losing force already. Their defenses have been pretty good when it comes to dealing with those Punishers. Uh, hopefully we're not going to have any severe issues here, but since we're not playing on Volskaya this time, I think it's probably just going to be a quick uh, disconnect or some yeah. mouse keyboard issues, something along those lines. So I'm curious how time zones slip over. Never mind, we're back in. I'll ask that question later. Uh, as we see Misaka already starting on the minion waves once again, but he's being pressured by Meng. A little too much. Heradric Cube not landing at least yet. It's Meng 
trying to continue to pile on the pressure. In the meantime, Blaze has been left in top lane, unattended. The XP lead beginning to extend here for the one. SPT need to make something happen. Shuriken Mastery getting to one of its completed stages. Yeah. Melody Seelung sometimes likes to spoil us with some exotic Genji builds. He's a big fan of the Dragon's Claw at level 4. But we haven't seen that talent at all in quite some time, have we? So instead, the new hotness, the new go-to seems to be the good old fashioned shuriken built there goes the dragon's arrow onto his brother onto melody c stay one listens stay one and listen doesn't get anyone again it's like the third one that hasn't got the value they want blaze is delivered to oh. his easy edge in the meantime melody c though picks up a counter kill nicely done so able to recover a little bit here it's still a two for one but it's way better than a two for zero yeah. And during all of this, Leoric has been doing his work there, double soaking top and middle. That's currently his job here. Lucky in trouble. Two squishies against four men. A four man unit of the one, and they find that kill. How the, were they even to get? How were they even able to get that kill? I don't understand. There was a fort. They could have had so much movement freedom there. Why did they walk towards the top? It was good positioning by the one. Don't get me wrong, but I also think, especially Lucky on that, Jaina needs to play a little more carefully there. Yeah, no support, no tank for peeling. Exactly. The, the the concern is there. Well, he has plenty of game left to be able to recover that and bring it back for his team. He has the water elemental, so it's going to be a lot of pressure onto that hunter once the next team fight starts. So everyone gets ready to rotate down to this bottom area after, of course, they have fallen shamans. Because why would you leave without extra map pressure? Does Lucky have the Ice Block yet? I don't think so. Otherwise, he probably would have used it in that last skirmish. So uh, he really needs to ramp up his damage a little bit because against heroes like Phoenix uh, with the Salvo, the Dragon's Arrow on the Hanzo, I think the Ice Block would give him a lot of benefits. Now, 8 to 1 Skeletons already. Both teams are posturing up. Both teams have their Fallen Shamans pushing in the top lane, so these should be able to cancel each other out. I don't think any team will have the significant advantage here. Misaka just what dropping a shadow charge to good measure. The other I don't know how many minions? It comes lightning yeah. breath. He he, very low, but surviving. And everyone on oh, this is gonna be savage. Just surviving wow. though. Everyone gets out. So this is likely gonna be the Punisher taken by the one. But the SVT, they survive again. So much damage done by the Phoenix and so much healing provided by the Bunker and the Malfurion, and of course. So much protection, I should say. It's just crazy. Like, I was worried about SPT's damage, remember, during the draft, and I think this it really shows here that the Jaina last pick doesn't seem to be that tool they need to crack the defenses, especially since Lucky also didn't go Ring of Frost. I don't understand that choice, to be honest. I really think they needed a little bit of oomph, a little bit of AoE Wombo Shmombo to maybe uh, get through all that peel and all that defense that the one has brought to the table. Now, Purple Punisher, Arcane Punisher pushing on that bottom keep. The gate has been destroyed as well. Can they make that keep a fallen one? Fallen keep, fallen shamans did actually win out for SPT in the top place. So if they can survive this, it could be good. Lightning Breath is blocked by the bunker, but that has bought time for the Punisher to go down and also Jada to get caught out by Blaze Dragon Arrow as well. And the Phoenix damage just short thanks to the Rune of Fury. And Meg will actually go down here, yep. but it's still a three for one. The keep still falls. And the one continues. Oh, you gotta be careful here. Lead. Oh, oh, so ambitious by Misaka. <laughs> that could have been amazing, but the clutch heals from Afirian too good. Ah, <sighs> you. I'm not sure if he should have played that game of resets. I. It was a little risky. True, there was no Twilight Dream available. He did go for Tranquility, as you just said. That is, so he didn't have to worry about that. But. Into four members, there's always someone who can stun you, who can keep you at bay. The Garage, for example, the Blaze. It was a very reckless move, and I'm not sure it was a necessary one. And that's really unusual, right, for players like Melody C to really lose their nerves and trying to go for those cheeky maneuvers. Um, it feels like they are biting a little off more than they can chew. And um, this is very unusual for HPT. I don't recognize them at this point, I gotta say. ZJ, ZZ, uh, ZZH excuse me, is looking a little weaker on that uh, Deckard. He's reminding me of that early yeah. CZH that never really found his way into the upper echelons of support players. Melody C, unfocused, unconcentrated, and Misaka looking a little helpless, to be honest, on that Diablo. His third Diablo in a row that didn't convince me. 
I'm starting to think that they're going to struggle at this point until the new patch, until the patch catches, uh, issue trying to catches up with the current patch. Mm -hmm. Because the second we can start putting ZZH back onto Rhaegar, the better. Yeah. That might be, that might be a really big help for him. I'm not gonna lie, he really felt more comfortable on those heroes like Uther, uh, Rhaegar, and the more old school ones. And oh, look at that the blind engage! He wonderful, he done. Did he have vision of that? Either way, he, he absolutely destroyed, eats a full lightning breath. We will call that the easy bake oven as he gets entombed into lightning breath there. Nicely done. Absolutely amazing. So I would love to see a replay here because it looked to me like it was completely blind. Like pure game sense, pure spider tingling senses. Um, but I'm not sure if the minions maybe had some vision on it before. So they maybe. knew Garrosh was lurking in that bush. Or if it was just SBT popping off and showing us some signs, some moments of their actual, um, you know, skill. Because they are a really good in team. Tomb isn't the longest ability in the world. I don't hate it, if he, even if it was blind. But if not, if it was vision, then get another one better. And now SBT. They're starting to make this work. They've realized that they're losing objectives. They're losing the soap because of the blaze rotations a little bit more efficient than the Leoric rotations. What do they do? They bring Leoric to the team and they start popping off. Absolutely true. And if you give SPT even just the tiniest of momentum, they're going to ride this wave until the end of the game. They're going to take you out of it. So Soap using his massive uh, cleave there on Leoric to get several skeletons at the same time while the fallen shaman camp is still occupying muggle and uh you know the remaining members of the one a little bit they're busy in the middle they're trying to keep the lanes clear i mean they still have 13 seconds without blaze and uh i don't think they even want to contest anymore i think they're like you know what guys we can defend that yeah. we're just going to try to get 20 because with a talent advantage we can definitely defend this and maybe even counter attack so uh spt with that level 20 and the lack of it um they're going to get this objective for sure but they can't really overextend it SPT also sending Jaina down to the bot lane, cleaning up the Kazakh mm -hmm. camps and those catapults, leaving just the Auric in top lane to begin this objective. Mid fort will certainly fall. There is no doubt about that, as the one grabbed themselves enough XP for level 20. That is fantastic, because it means it's going to make a push much harder from SPT. They finally managed yeah. to get themselves an advantage by getting the Punisher, and now they can't do anything. So I think there was uh, two ways for SPT to play it. They could have left the Shrine at 39 Skulls and then just tried to get that level 20 in time. But that would have always been that threat of, you know, the one showing up, getting close to 39 themselves, and then just turning on a fight with 20 against 19. The way they played it is they took this Immortal relatively early. It's still going to get some decent damage done, although five people of the one are defending right now. And in the meantime, while the enemies are occupied and distracted by the Punisher, they're going to get some four damage done on the bottom. They're going to soak some in the middle, and boom, there goes the level 20. So... In the end, I think this was the safer way of playing it, and this was the better way of playing it. And now they can fight on even terms, and this next team fight may very well be a decisive one. If several members now die for SBT, guess what? Bottom lane is naked. Um, the one is going to charge through that. But on the flip side, if SBT now gets a clean team web, for example, they could equally end the game through top. So SBT, they managed to pick up a couple kills. Here comes the Buried Alive. It's on to Garage. Everyone fully commits. Easy bake oven round two. And then we have a nice sleep. Once again, it's, it's the upgraded lightning breath, actually. Not even yeah. letting it go through the full duration. As that thing lasts 12 seconds, enjoy <laughs> that. Um, so we see them able to pick up yet another kill here. What's the name for the combo where you get woken up from sleep by lightning breath? I don't know. When you wake up with a lightning breath, it's uh, the thunder. Uh, uh, morning breath. There we go. Morning you breath. Could, you, you work it out. <laughs> As we oh see, the, God. Pit, as see the uh, pick up onto that mid fort, <laughs> the final remaining fort, except SPG still actually has top fort, I've just realized. How has that not gone down yet? But either way, these pickups using that entomb just on Garrosh, when they were trying to focus him earlier, they didn't have the damage. Now they do. Now they can actually focus down any target who they really want to engage upon. Nice vision by Hanzo. But this is allowing them to actually gain a little bit of footing. And SPT finally in control, the one. They said when they came to SBT that they were mostly uh, to SBT to MSB that they were mostly there to learn. Now they have come to SBT and they were in a good position, but late yeah. game experience showing up for SBT at the moment. Absolutely, uh, SBT is dominating that late game up to this point. Their heroic abilities are always on point, and I'm loving it. Now, Tetcher, you mentioned this the uh, easy bake oven combo. 
uh, initiated yes. by Leoric. Now, we know that Leoric has a very popular skin concept, you know, that many people are looking for, which is the janitor. But could you imagine yes. him being a baker, uh, using a giant baguette to cleave at his opponents and then, you know, putting them in the oven? Possibly. What would March of the Black King be? Uh, just doing like a pretzel shaped well, march. Why, why does he have to be a baker? Why can't he just be a chef? Just have a whole chef's uh, theme. You've got a Stitches one. So he's literally just holding like, like Gordon Ramsay a announcer? butter knife. Just a butter knife and literally butters people as he goes <laughs> past the March of the Black King. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Applies butter. Uh, I, would, I wouldn't hate that. Do we already have yeah, Chef Rain Stitches? He would seasoning. fit in right there. Yeah, Rain Hope is seasoning. I dig it. In theory, the Entomb could just be a giant fridge if they really wanted to. <laughs> uh, Put him in the fridge. All right, Chef, excellent, Leoric, excellent idea. Um, as we see, the one continuing to get a little bit of push in top lane, but SBT, easy rotation. Yeah. Going to be able to clean that up and keep that fort alive. And Chen becomes Nomi from World of Warcraft, the Master Chef. There we go. Blizzard, please do. But I'm already happy with the Mad Max theme they've got going on with the, the diesel speaker Nazebo. It's going to be the best size, oh, like it says in the trailer. Uh, in the trailer, it's so good. I have another Rainer skin. Yes. As we see them move forward, though, Misaka, he's wrapped around. He's waiting for his opportunity. Buried Alive is available. So creeping forward. Let's see. Just, he's staying out of range at the moment, so he can just sort of dash forward. He's trying to look, force them into a false set of security almost. All right. This is going to be an important one, guys. This is going to be an important one, Tetra. 23 oh, to 22. Good. Who's going to make the initiation first? Looks like it's the one. Easy bake oven. It's the free. He messed up into the fray, so Malfurion did not leave the Entomb, and as such got taken out. The Lightning Breath keeps going. Finally, Misaka falls. That upgraded Lightning Breath, so good. Down one goes combo, he. Two. Early C's got resets. He gets another one, and it is a three for zero, three for one, but Diablo already alive. Now a four for one, and Beautiful. they can get Meng as well. Diablo's on the way. Purification Salvo as a last-ditch effort, but Meng shall fall eventually. Wow. The spirit, but he goes down, and now they can push him with this Punisher. There's still pretty long respawn time, as they could try and go with this Punisher to try and end the game, but there's still a wall. Yeah, there's still they a wall. They can, they can just destroy this one wall piece or just go and circle around it all together. The yeah, Fallen Shaman have paved the way, Tetcher. And I think even without the help of that purple Punisher, they're going to have more than enough to take down that core. SPT with one good late game team fight after the other, despite looking shaky in the early mid game. They showed us all the class they've got and they take down the one in game number one. What a performance here. And I got to highlight two players here. I think Misaka's uh, lightning breasts were absolutely amazing there towards the end. And also Melody C on that Genji. He had insane mobility there in that last team fight, getting one swift strike in after yeah. the other. And the fact that he had the agile dismount there as well, he actually just used it to, uh, to get a bigger jump in. So he mounted up, used the bigger jump over the wall, which would have been faster than running and then got another kill. It didn't really make a big difference because the team fight was won already, but the way he used those mechanics was a pleasure to behold. It really was. Was very impressive. Was able to get some serious work.